Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you a beautiful tutorial on how to make this A Little Mermaid Fufucha doll. I've been meaning to make a tutorial for a very long time but I will keep up with them. Um, this was a custom order that was made and I decided to record the process on the way so that way you guys could see how I made it and if you wish to make your own you can do so as well. The pattern will be available in my blog and the blog will be in the description box below. Also there's two parts to this tutorial. The first part you're going to learn how to do the tail, the torso and part of the head, getting it ready. And the second video will be the rest of the process. Um, I did do a voice overlay on this tutorial that way I could explain to you as I go along the materials and the process of making this doll. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description box below and enjoy this tutorial. Thank you and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye. Okay, so the two smooth ball foam balls is a three inch, two and a half inch. And I'm gonna be using the red and the skin color foamies. Here is the glue that I'm gonna be using. It's a tech bond glue. It's mostly like a super glue, but it works just as well. This is the torso pattern that I just saw. And I'm going to be using this, um, I guess it's one of those knives that you could guess, like a box open knife. And I try to use, this foam ball is really stiff. I did sand it out a little bit. So here, as you can see, I'm going to grab my uh, skin color foam ball. And I'm just going to grab just a skewer stick and get my torso. I do not like drawing out my patterns. I like to just score them because I don't like to have pencil or pen marks on my um, um, projects so I just score it with a skewer marker or anything point if you have a, a just a regular um, scoring tool you could use that as well uh, so I'm just cutting out my torso just reg use regular scissors to cut this out uh, make sure they're nice and sharp so that way you have clean edges when you cut out your patterns so after I cut out my torso, I'm going to glue them together. Um, so I'm just using my Tech Bond Artesian. Uh, they have like three, st uh, three different levels. This is a level three. This is the strongest one, more bonds. I usually like using the um, super glue by, um, and let me see the name here that I got, by Lost Lock, 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 Loctite Super Glue. I like using that instead sometimes because it glues more quicker by the time I didn't have that on hand so I had to use this one so here I'm just fitting in my foam ball make sure everything is nice and fitted and after it's fitted in I start uh, gluing it I use my hot glue gun um, to bond the foam with the foam ball the foam the foam sheet with the foam ball because the super glue will eat through that foam so after that, you make sure you measure everything out, everything is fine. I start doing, you know, attaching the two parts together, as you can see here. Okay, I, now I'm going to get the foam ball, the three inch one, to start preparing the head. I just cut out a big, huge sheet, make sure it's double the size. I have this mold. This, that I made myself just get some cardboard measured out a three inch circle and cut it out and this what helps me to actually get a smooth finish when I put in the foam sheet now I like to get like some round to stabilize the ball so that way it won't move around and then I start ironing or um, heating up my iron sorry about that and now I start heating up the foam sheet now I'm gonna just move the iron over now I like putting like a cardboard on top I don't really like using my hands because you will get burned you want to start making sure it gets heated up to the point that you see it's folding over or curling up and there you know it's ready you do not want to leave it on that long because then it'll stretch too much so you can see this get becomes really stretchy I use my mold I have to work with it right real fast because if not it cools down and it will um, not form properly so I started pulling on the edges at the bottom to um, make sure I don't have no wrinkles or creases on the sides. Once I know that's ready and it's cooled down, I start pulling it out. I take the foam ball out and this is the final product. Now I'm going to start cutting around, getting rid, um, rid of all the excess. I start cutting around the little um, edge that was formed from the mold. 
and then after I do that I just measure to make sure it's halfway there now I'm going to do the same process with the red one Okay, after you have both your pieces cut, I start gluing them it into place. So what I did is I drew like a middle line to see where I'm going to put my glue. I only glue the edges, I do not glue the whole thing because I don't want little lumps on my face of my doll. So I just glue the edges and that will secure your foam sheet on the foam ball. So you just have to make sure it's nice and sealed all the way around. You do not want to make sure you have no gaps. Because that, well, that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid lumps on our foam ball. So after that you have your foam ball secure, I'm going to start gluing down the red part. It is overlapping a little bit, but that's okay. As you can see here, I am finished gluing on the red one, which is fine. Making sure that everything is nice and smooth. That little dent, I made a little dent and I just push it in the foam ball into the little dent just to give it a smoother look that's optional you really don't have to do that because I'm anyway I'm gonna cover the um, the two divided foams with another piece of foam sheet here I'm gonna admit I made a little boo-boo and I'm just gonna let you know from that I usually use the strip with the same um, with the hair color not the skin color but here I went with the hair color it really didn't make a difference because after the finished product and the doll was done um, you can't really tell but just to let you know I usually do use the hair color to um, put the strip around to cover up the two divided uh, the two colors okay so then you just cut out whatever's left over from the strip make sure that is nice and tight and firm there so you just inspect your ball look around and make sure everything is fine and now we're just gonna go to the next step okay so here I have my tail pattern like I mentioned the pattern will be available in my blog so the link will be in the description box below so you can get it okay here are the two fabrics that I used and this is like a netted fabric and this is a satin fabric um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut out the patterns that I need um, for my tail as you can see here I am putting a double I'm gonna let you know I did cut out a double piece of each one just to let you know you do not need a double you just need a single that was a big boo-boo uh, that I made but I did edit that out but just to let you know that is you just need a single layer of each to make the tail so right now I'm just cutting it out as you can see here it is doubled I'm like, wait a minute after I cut it I realized it but in this process it is cutting but just to give you guys a heads up it's just a single layer not a double layer so I'm just gonna let you see the rest while I cut my fabric Okay, so after I'm done cutting it out, remove the um, pattern, and I'm just expecting it here. As you can see, I'm trying to actually 
make sure that both pieces are exactly the same when I still at this point did not realize that I cut two pieces when I only needed one. So I'm getting my other fabric and I did the same thing. I cut two layers when you only need one and here I'm cutting it out. I just put the green, the satin one on top of the netted. This netted fabric is beautiful. It actually looks, I chose this one because it lo actually looks like seaweed. Um, the color is beautiful. It has sequins and it's blingy and it's nice. So here, I'm done cutting out my uh, four pieces that I shouldn't cut, but here I edited it out and you can see there's only one piece of each and here we're actually doing it correctly. So here you're just going to flip it inside out and you're going to sew the two pieces together as I showed you with my finger. Go along the line. You're not going to sew the bottom or the top. You uh, turn it around inside out and here's the final product of the tail. So here I'm measuring and it should be a perfect fit. This pattern is for a two and a half inch ball, remember that. Okay, this little piece that I cut out and I um, have the measurements out for you, I sewed it up, is actually for the waist. And uh, now I'm turning inside out with this, um, it's actually the little stick that my uh, fabric, I mean my cotton stuff came with, you know, the stuff you stuff pillows and stuff, that's what I'm gonna stuff the tail with. So I'm just turning it inside out, as you can see here. This is gonna be for my um, for my tail. I mean for my waist. Sorry. So I'm just gonna get an iron, iron it out to flatten it out. Just um, get the bubbleness out of it, and then I'm just gonna have that right put. But you know what? I did realize I could have sewn this on before instead of a uh, gluing it on now because how the waist was so thin it was really hard to get this sewn in the sewing machine this is wiring jewelry wiring is really flexible and strong and this is perfect this is what I actually use for the arms and the legs of my dolls if I want to make a move or flexible so this is what I use to make the tail flexible so I just poke it a hole with a skewer stick into the foam ball and I'm now putting in the wire and I'm gonna glue in that wire into the foam ball Okay, so here I have all my pieces, and I'm ready to glue that wire. So I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue. Okay, yes, I use hot glue when it goes to when is anything it's glued directly to the foam ball because, like I said, super glue will eat it up. So here I'm just measuring out how much wire I'm gonna need. I like to take it down all the way to the tip of the tail, as you can see here. Okay, now I'm going to get my material, my cotton. I use the polyfill, the fiber fill. I actually get this at Walmart, and this is what I use to um, stuff in my the tail of my doll. So having the wire there, get, um, putting in the polyfill will give it the um, stiffness and the shape that we need and the wire will give it the movement that we need because now she's going to be sitting on a stone I need to move the tail around so if I use like a regular skewer stick like sometimes I use it won't be happening so yeah so here I'm just gluing on the waistband as you can see the final result how it nicely looks now I want to put like a decorative something decorative for the tail so I'm here looking around actually and I found these flat back pearls these mini pearls um, they actually look white on video, but they're actually like a mint green color, as you can see. And I'm just going to glue it all the way around the waist of my, um, of my doll. So that way it gives it that nice, cute touch. And it also helps to cover up in any imperfections that you might have. So, yeah, just like giving these little, de I love, I'm a very, um, I love putting a lot of detail into my projects. You know, I just not can't leave them plain. I always have to add something in there. So yeah, I'm just gluing on the pearls right now. Okay, so um, well, I finished gluing on the pearls. 
I just want to thank you all for watching the first part of this tutorial. The second part will be coming out very soon. Please pay attention to that. Um, so just to give you a quick um, reminder that the pattern will be available in my blog and the link is down in the description box below. So thank you all for watching. I hope this tutorial was very helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. And um, part two will be coming up very soon. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. God bless. Bye-bye.